please welcome our first speaker, Shamik Bhatra. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming and supporting Palestine. Such a topic provokes sequence of questions that relate to the past as much as to the present. First, it is important in this event to frame the conflict. colonial state and the Palestinians are leading an anti-colonial struggle. In this sense, we can refute the historical narrative of Zionism about the situation in Palestine, especially their conscious advocacy of a binary conflict framework or a religious conflict by early Zionist leaders. They aim by this claim to counter accusations of settler colonialism and mobilize non-Zionist youth. This could highlight a reason for Zionist anger when Israel is accused as an, an entity of settler colonialism. Zionists often describe this accusation as anti-Semitic. Israeli public diplomacy, the Hasbara, uses a maneuver in order to deny the colonial characteristic of Israel and to keep it out of international consciousness. In this regard, it is significant to correct some misconceptions surrounding the nature of Palestinian struggle. Such misconceptions have occurred for many decades by Western media, especially after the terrorist attacks against the World Trade Center in 2001. Those attacks can be regarded as a turning point, turning point in history. The attacks increased Western media bias against Palestinians. In contrast, Western media depicted the Israelis as being interested in peace and in the process of compromising with Palestinians. During the so-called war on terror, Western media connected the Palestinian issue with terrorism while describing Israel as civilized defender in the supposed clash of civilization. In this context, it is important for our supporters to use the correct language as advocated for by Palestinians. We are the indigenous Palestinians, not Arab in Israel. They are Israeli colonial settlers, not citizens. It's ethnic cleansing in Jerusalem, not eviction. It's settler colonial, colonial terrorism, not clashes. They are not Israeli defender forces. They are Israeli occupation forces. It's not war like war between two equal parties. It's aggression. It is resistance, not terrorism. It is important to remember that resistance has been legitimized by the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 3246 of 29th of November. 1974, reaffirming the legitimacy of the people struggle for liberation from colonial and foreign domination and subjugation by all available means, including armed struggle. It is important to lobby the International Criminal Court 
and call for investigation into Israeli war crimes and the crimes against humanity that continue to be committed in Palestine, including in Sheikh Jarrah, West Bank, and Gaza. Palestinians insist on prosecuting the leaders of Israeli occupation for their crimes against civilians in Palestine to the International Criminal Court. We call for the establishment of an international movement that supports us in this regard. In this event, I'd like to confirm the important decision by the National Labor Conference to place its, uh, in its national platform the recognition of Palestine. It is called for the next labor government to recognize a Palestinian state. This issue will be an important priority. In this respect, I'd like to remind you that Western powers, such as Britain, France, and the United States, besides the Zionist movement, actively have opposed the Palestinian aspiration for statehood and independence since 1917. Both Britain and the Zionist movement treated the prospect of independent Palestinian state as a grave threat. The Zionist movement saw such prospect as a particular challenge to the Jewish aspiration to exclusive sovereignty over what they con consider the land of Israel. Also, in order to show solidarity, we urge you to join your local BDS group and boycott companies highlighted by BDS on their boycott list in, in encourage your work, workplace and any organization you are part to comply with the boycott too. In light of the serious violation of human rights by Israeli occupation, the international community and Western countries should stop supporting Israel. At least they should end military ties with Israel. Because military ties and cooperation have encouraged Israel to continue its aggression and violation of human rights. For example, Israel is backed by 3.8 billion in annual military funding from the US government. It is significant to mention to the, to the campaign of Greens in Australia for Palestine, which aim to end military ties with Israel. I hope the Greens activate this important campaign again. It is important to encourage brave groups and activists among the youth from Jewish community in Australia who choose the struggle for justice over silence and compl complicity, who work to build a Judaism and Jewish community beyond Zionism. It would be good to mention the documentary screening in dialogue Jews on the Borders, directed by Kea Kranko, which gives voice to the specific Jewish identity that's very existed within the Jewish community in Australia. I will not go to the details about film, just you can search, it is important. <clears throat> Break the Israeli blockade. I'd like to talk about my experience regarding solidarity, regarding the Gaza Surfing Project, as I am a member of the Northern Beaches Committee for Palestine, which is leading the Gaza Surfing Project. Our group succeeded in bringing Mohammed Saleh and Hassan al habib from Gaza to come to Sydney. After a long process, it took the committee nearly two years of hard work and negotiations to get Muhammad and Il Habib to Australia. In January 2020, Northern Steam Surf Life Saving Club posted two men from Gaza, Muhammad and Hassan, to learn about the life saving in order to establish Nibbles program. They also undertook bronze medallion. The surfing, uh, the surfing life saving project seeks support for the establishment of Surf Life Saving Club in Gaza, B 
beach. The aim of, of this project is to provide children of Gaza a safe place to play and to learn to swim. This is example about showing solidarity to connect Palestinians with the activities in sport and culture. And this is one of the answer of the main question of this, this uh, discussion. Um, um, I have like example about solidarity summarize the history of Palestine by beautiful song. Um, I'd like to show this one. No words. No words, yeah. Okay, we can we can do that later. future of justice, equality, and freedom for all people. Finally, as a Palestinian, I'd like to confirm that despite of the aggression and the Israeli aggression, the spirit of Palestinian resistance will never be broken. Thank you so much. So my name is Murtaz, uh, Murtaz Abu Ghazali. Um, uh, very, very happy to be here talking to you. Uh, I, I represent uh, BDS Australia, uh, part of the executive committee over there. And um, I guess what I'll try to do here is uh, go through um, a few points. Okay? I'm going to do a very quick, very brief history of Palestine and the Mecca. It's not going to be as artistic as the YouTube video that, uh, that you've seen just now. Uh, but I think it's important because to me, uh, like this is our story, right? Um, I, I come from a family of refugees. Um, 
we were dispossessed to uh, inside Palestine and outside Palestine. Um, my my uh, my family from my father's side ended up in Gaza, and uh, my uncle in 1967 in one of the battles against the Zionists was killed in that battle near the uh, city of Nablus. Twenty years later, my father was killed by the Muslim Israelis. So. My grandma, I feel really bad for her. She had to outlive two of her sons, uh, living in blockade in Gaza. So for me, the story is, as you can see, is very personal, right? That, that's my story. And I'm really glad to be here to talk to you about how you can help us and can support uh, Palestinians, okay? So that's, that, that's the history we're gonna cover. Um, of course, there are some recent events that we've all witnessed in the past few weeks. Okay, I'll talk about that. Uh, then I guess my key ask is going to be more around uh, BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanction. I'll go in a bit more details about that. Okay, so you, you're familiar with the history. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, but again, Palestine has always been populated by uh, uh, Muslims and also Christians and Jews. So it's, it's, it's a holy land, it's the, it's, it's the land of the three uh, religions. Uh, everyone used to, used to live there. Uh, that all changed uh, by World War I, by the end of World War I, okay? Um, I guess the, the Belfort Declaration, which we also seen in the, in the video, has promised the land to the Zionists. And I think that kind of started changing uh, everything when designers started arriving to Palestine and their population started to increase and slowly started taking over uh, the land and disposing the, the, the Palestinians. Uh, uh, interestingly, they believe it's a God-given right. Most of them don't even believe in God. Okay? But they still believe he promised them Palestine. Now, 19, 1948, uh, uh, for us, uh, this is what we call a Nakba, which translates to the catastrophe. That's, that's when the, the, the Zionists uh, declared the establishment of, of uh, the Israeli state. Uh, in 1948, leading up to 1948, and even before that, uh, uh, Many Palestinians were uh, dispossessed. Uh, villages and towns and, 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 and were, were destroyed. Uh, uh, people, homes, people were, were forced to, to leave their homes uh, uh, and never be able to, to come back. And for us, for us that's, that's kind of a very, very important uh, uh, date. Um, however, it doesn't stop there. So during a Nakba, or the 1948 and Nakba, approximately like almost up to a million Palestinians were forced to into exile. Okay, um, my family being one of them. Okay, um, eight million uh, Palestinian refugees living in, in, in occupied Palestinian uh, territories and neighboring. Uh, was denied the, 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 the right to, to return to, to their homes. Okay? And of course, there's like something around 150,000 Palestinians that stayed within the borders of 1948 and became a second class citizen in Israel. And we learned later that Israel has got so many laws to discriminate against against citizens from a Palestinian or an Arab origin, just because they might, they might be. Of course, the Nakba didn't stop in 1948. It continues until, until today. Uh, the, 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 uh, and again, I guess some of the recent events in Sheikh Jarrah is, I guess, one of the examples that we've all witnessed uh, on media especially during the holy month of, of Ramadan. And, and as some of you already know, uh, most of you already know, 
uh, Ramadan is, is a very holy month for Muslims. And during that month, uh, 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 the Palestinians were trying to pray at the, the Aqsa. The, the Israelis, the, the police and the defense stormed the Aqsa and, and it was up to kids to go and, 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 and fight and resist and force them, force them out. Uh, obviously, it all started in, in early 19, uh, uh, 1917 with the declaration and the arrival of the Zionists. 1947, this is what it used to look like from a population perspective. Green being uh, 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 like a Palestinian uh, uh, land, uh, and, and the white spots are Jewish uh, settlements during that period. And then uh, uh, there was a partition plan in 1947. Which came, I think the, the ratio was uh, to give 55% of the land to, to less than 30% of the people. So 55% goes to the Zionists, uh, 45% goes to uh, uh, Palestinians, which is uh, obviously uh, not fair. But what ended up happening is the Zionists took 78% of the land, okay, leaving, leaving us with the almost 22 so there was, this, this was the plan, as you can see, but these guys are there, and, and, and there's a bit into the desert, but what ended up happening is this. But again, this didn't stop. The land grab continues, and, and, and today with the apartheid walls uh, uh, surrounding and inside the West Bank, uh, that kind of separates the Palestinian land uh, uh, altogether. And you can see like the, the Palestinian land is the Okay, with the building of the settlements uh, uh, and, and uh, the possessing of, the, of uh, Palestinian homes. I think this is this is very very important because when we get to the PDS, that's that's a very important uh, notion over there. Okay. Now, what did the Palestinians do? It's been a hundred years of struggle, so we tried everything. Okay, you've heard of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which kind of kind of the armed uh, struggle against the Israelis, the, all kinds of uh, uh, operations. Uh, in, in 1987, uh, 93 and 93 was the first intifada, or the uprising, and that's when little kids started throwing stones at the Israelis and the settlers. So that was like a form of uh, 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 resistance that they had. So, uh, like literally everything that the Palestinians can, can do, they tried. Uh, uh, but again, Palestinians were always outnumbered and outpowered by the Israelis and, and their arms and weapons and, and finance from, from supporting countries. So there wasn't a victory, maybe small achievements here, here and there, but it wasn't to really become cold and it was that uh, victory. Now, um, the year 2000 to 2005, we had the second Intifada. Eventually, Israeli withdrew from, from Gaza. Uh, but then, since then, Gaza has been in, in, in full blockade. Okay? Uh, uh, and Israel, since then, been uh, waging war on, on Gaza. We have seen the massacres in 2008, uh, 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 12, 14, and just recently in, in and it never stops. So as you can see, it's been more than 100 years or 100 years of struggle where we tried almost all kind of uh, resistance, uh, different ways to deal with uh, with, with, uh, with Israelis. Latest events is the issues that we have in Sheikh Jarrah. Again, Nakba continues, capacity continues. Uh, uh, people didn't ask to, uh, not ask, but not nicely, right? We pushed to leave their houses, right? Uh, and then until the young Palestinians started resisting and, and, and we came to know about this in the media and uh, uh, you've seen all the demonstrations that happened here uh, all, all the weekends to in, in solidarity and support. So the question is like, what can we do about all of this, right? We're not over there, we cannot carry a stone, we're not going to carry a stone and go over there, right? So what can we do from where we are here, okay? So this is where the movement for boycott, divestment, and sanction comes into play. Okay, around 2005, uh, some 177 uh, groups 
uh, uh, from Palestine. So it's basically what the Palestinians are asking for. They came together and, and, and put the call for boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel. So it, it's, it's a non-violent action. It is inspired by uh, 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 the history of, of, of resistance that we had, also inspired by the South African anti-apartheid uh, movement and the US uh, civil rights uh, movement. When we look at, at the goals of, of uh, the BDS, we've got three main points here. Number one is to end the occupation and colonization of all Arab lands and to dismantle the war. Number two is to recognize the fundamental rights of Arab Palestinian citizens uh, uh, of Israel to full equality. We know that Israel has got some, some 70 something discrimination laws against uh, 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 the, the uh, Arab Palestinian citizens of, of the state of Israel. And number three is respect, protect, and promote uh, the rights of, of Palestinian refugees to return to their home as stipulated by the UN Resolution 194. So today, uh, uh, any, any Jewish anywhere around the world can land in Tel Aviv, they'll be granted entry and citizenship. Doesn't matter where their family comes from, doesn't matter where they come from. I don't, I don't buy into this promised land. Uh, I think it was Edward Said that said, I never knew that God is a real estate agent. But Palestinians who had homes and lands taken from them, we don't have the right to return. Okay? I'm going to try to wrap up this very quickly. Yeah. So BDS, just to, get to, to explain, BDS is, is, is a strategic and a focused national campaign that do achieve victories. I'll talk about some of the uh, achievements that we had here in Australia. Uh, and I'll talk about some of the different things. I think the key thing, and on why I'm asking you to support BDS, because it's really a very focused and very strategic campaign. We, we go through a lot of planning, a lot of research, a lot of analysis, uh, uh, so that we can pick the right campaigns, and we can, we can choose campaigns that actually help advance uh, the cause and help kind of create the debt in the kind of the, 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 uh, the uh, settlement organization. Uh, uh, we don't, BNC doesn't publish uh, 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 like shopping list type reports or boycott this and boycott that. That's not what we do because that's, that's so fragmented. We prefer to kind of work based on, on, on campaigns so that the effort is so concentrated and, and we try as much as possible to achieve maximum impact with these campaigns. Okay? So, um, and probably I mentioned before, like, We've got a lot of volunteers, uh, we've got a lot of people that we also can uh, uh, contract to help us do some work, and we do a lot of research. Uh, within Australia and every country that runs a BDS, we have autonomy to go and come up with our plans that, uh, uh, that we believe are important for where we are. Okay? Now, we've, we've heard a number of anti-BDS arguments. Okay? Uh, uh, one of them is BDS is anti-Semitic. I think that's, that's the argument against anything that calls uh, for justice for Palestinians, not just BDS, right? If you try to criticize uh, Israel, all of a sudden you're anti-Semitic. Uh, however, BDS is not a ban on, 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 on Jewish businesses, right? It has nothing to do with that. Uh, we focus on the Israeli government and the companies and uh, organizations are complicit uh, in the Israeli um, uh, violations of international law uh, and, and, and uh, we constantly tar target complicity uh, and not the identity. Okay? Uh, some of the arguments against BDS is that uh, BDS calls for the elimination of, of Israel. And I presented to you the three goals that we have uh, in BDS, uh, uh, and I again, as I mentioned, like Israeli, like any Jewish person can can land in Tel Aviv, they become an Israeli citizen immediately. But a Palestinian refugee who has the right to land in a house, and 
that the, that the UN Resolution 194 doesn't have the right to attend to, to, their, to their house. Uh, and then there, there are some claims that BDS is a violation of, of freedom of speech. Um, it's not. We, we, we don't, we don't uh, restrict any academic uh, employed by any Israeli uh, university uh, to speak. I would just ask people to boycott uh, uh, that speech. Okay, so some of the campaigns we had here in Australia, um, we've, we've participated in some of the global victories against the likes of uh, G4S, uh, Viola, and, and, and U, Eurovision, and, and we have a very, uh, like very Australian victory here uh, uh, when Elbert, which is an, an, an armed arms manufacturer and supplier the Israeli uh, 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 forces uh, was trying to uh, get a contract with the Royal Flying Doctors uh, uh, organization which is a very uh, 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 prestigious, respectful organization that really works really, really hard to save lives. Imagine them partnering with the likes of Elbert that put money and research and development into actually wasting life. Just doesn't make sense. And, and uh, uh, with a lot of hard work, we had a victory there and, and that, that partnership was canceled. Some of the most current campaigns, and uh, I think just like we've kind of signed into uh, the COVID uh, QR code, if you can, I'll leave this for a second, if you can. Sorry, I won't leave. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would really ask you ask how can how can non Palestinians support? My ask from you is to support BDS. Uh, this is one way you can support us. I scan this QR code or the QR code that uh, Henry is, is distributing now. Uh, uh, that will take you to the petition against uh, the two campaigns that we're actively working on right now. First one is HP, the second one is Puma. Okay. Uh, HP again plays a key role in providing technology to, to the Israeli uh, oppression, the Israeli military, uh, including including technology for checkpoints and ID card system and all of that, which is at the heart of the apartheid system of, of the Israelis. What you see here is this, is this is how the Palestinians are being treated at checkpoints inside the West Bank and, and in Palestine. Okay, and then the technology provided by HP. So, if you can go and have a look at that petition and, and sign, sign that petition, I think that would be the best thing you can do right now as a non-Palestinian to go and help. Second one uh, I would like to highlight, and hopefully you get the flyer now in a second, uh, or you can just scan this, this code here, uh, uh, is, is the to support us in the uh, campaign against uh, Puma. Puma supports uh, the Israeli national football team, uh, with, of course, members from settlements. And, and, and settlements, those are basically settlements on, on Palestinian land. It's basically Palestinian people who used to live there, dispossessed to create those settlements. And Puma is supporting the national team. We know that Puma is also sponsors of a couple of uh, teams over here uh, in Victoria and also in Queensland. Uh, so if you can go and, and Go to that petition page and sign. Uh, that would be great. Last one. This one I don't have a flyer for. So I'm going to leave it here. And please scan this QR code. This is very important. Uh, uh, we're seeing unprecedented support uh, uh, for this petition. It's a petition at the Australian Parliament, uh, uh, to the Australian Parliament, to go and uh, 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 create uh, policies to condemn the Israeli assault on Palestinians, uh, to support targeted sanctions and arms embargo on Israel, uh, to support uh, the suspension of uh, defense cooperation with Israel, and to end the uh, defense industry partnership with Israel, to introduce legislations to ban all settlement goods and services from entering Australia, and to prevent uh, Australian companies from operating, trading, or investing in settlements 
or contributing uh, to their maintenance, maintenance or, or, or expansion. Uh, we've seen a lot of support for this petition online, already uh, uh, on the uh, uh, Parliament uh, of Australia website. And uh, if you scan this one, uh, you can go there and add your name to that petition. So we can step uh, aside for a second, give people a chance to scan the code. But also, like with the flyers, that will also take you to our website with a lot more details and information about campaigns. And, 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 and if you missed any of those campaigns, you can also find it on the website. But please, while we're here, and I can see a couple of phones coming out and people scanning their QR code, if, if you really want to help and want to help now, before you leave the room, this is one of the best ways you can actually help them for the Palestinians right now. Okay? I'm going to leave for another minute or less, maybe. Okay? The other important thing is um, obviously, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show our social media links, okay? Because uh, I think it's very important if uh, you join our, our list so we can keep you posted with latest developments and campaigns. Uh, uh, if you could, please donate. Uh, 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 financial resources go a long way in helping us build those campaigns and, and, and work on the campaigns and achieve some of those victories, which are very, very important for, uh, for Palestinians. Just want to remind you with, with one last thing before I, I close. Uh, you ask, what can you as a non-Palestinian do to support show solidarity? The, 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 the Palestinian Civil Society in 2005 made that call for BDS and clearly <coughs> asked and said that BDS is one of the most effective ways to resist. We've tried so many different things, not discounting you know, all the other forms of struggle, but it is one of the most effective ways and we've seen so many successes and victories in Australia and around the world. So please, show your support, sign your petitions, donate, because that will help us go a long way in, in our struggle. Thank you so much. Now the first question is to Jefferson at the back. Yeah. Two minutes, Jefferson. I won't read two minutes. Uh, I was looking at uh, YouTube this afternoon, and uh, apart from uh, 50,000 other YouTubers posting uh, three of the friendly Jolies, half a million hits yesterday after they were raided by the special anti-terrorism squad for following Brass around. Um, I noticed a little item saying that Google has altered the map of Gaza. So I was curious to know if you caught up with that little juicy bit of gossip yet. And the other thing, uh, under BDS, um, for the last 50 years, I suspect, nearly every Israeli 18-year-old boy has, and quite a few of the girls have gone over to Israel, even though they're Australian citizens, and done their compulsory two-year military training. Could not that be included, that any Israeli Australian citizens who go to Israel for military training be declared uh, foreign mercenaries? <laughs> Thank you. Who wants to? So look, I don't, I don't have any comment on the Google map. I've never seen that. Uh, but I, I really like your second suggestion. Uh, maybe we should put that in a petition. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Alice is over there. Hi, Alice. Hi, Alice. Hi, Number three of your goals is that all Palestinians should be able to return but that's very much disputed because the, Israel, the Palestinian diaspora has grown so much that it's 
Israeli Jews would be swamped. I don't know whether that's a good counter argument, but that is very often made when I'm talking to people. I also would advise you with rather long experience of close to 94 years, that it's not much use asking this government to do anything positive at all. The Greens, of course, have got the best policy. However, they're very unlikely to fall government. At least the ALP has recognised Palestine. Don't you think that that might be a better way to go to support one of those parties? <coughs> so, look, sir, thank you for your comments. I guess point number three, uh, if I choose to exercise my right, that should be my choice. I don't have that right to so uh, uh, that's, that's a very important point, okay? Um, you, your point about the government support um, probably shares similar sentiments. Uh, uh, and I know that there are a number of other solidarity organizations in Australia that work solely on uh, lobbying with, with the government. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, they, they work with different parties, they try to this is a hard battle, it's not, it's not easy, but yeah, I know, I know there's such effort happening. Um, and again, our, our focus, I'm speaking from uh, uh, from a BDS point of view, our focus is primarily on launching and supporting those campaigns uh, uh, that we believe, hopefully, uh, will lead us somewhere uh, in our struggle. Do you something? Thank you. When we are talking about decolonization, that means we want to achieve democratic state. So right of return will be easy as long as we are talking about democratic state. The problem about the Israeli government, which doesn't respect the Palestinians to integrate with uh, Jewish people to live together. There was shared life between Jewish and Christians and Muslims. And we want to uh, work hard and struggle in order to achieve this shared life. So I don't think uh, the right of return is hard to be achieved as, in, as we are talking about decolonization. So the problem about col colonial system in Israel. So this is I. Thanks, Jimmy. Okay, who's next? Um, so, to help me and then to you. Hello. Yeah, it's not really a question, it's an answer for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, from my point of view. Look, I, I talked once in a synagogue in Sometimes, and I'm Palestinian, usually. I lead BDS Australia. And they asked me this question, you lead BDS Australia, the Palestinians return to the noise. I said, I, I am pregnant, but that's my view, at least. Let's first have two-state solution, which the international community uh, agreed on. The, any Jews' right to go today and have a citizenship should stop. All Palestinians would have the right to go to, to the 22% that we accepted. Let's wait 10, 15 years when this hatred and bloodshed stops, and then the whole people will have a referendum. It, the, with all the respect, the Zionist thinking that we should we should rule ourselves has to change. Judaism is a religion; it's not ethnicity or race. Similar to any other democratic country, Judaism should be out of politics. People is vote not based on religion, based on merit, based on qualification, based on the leadership, based on the ability to lead. If they don't change this mindset, it will be a problem. However, there are examples in the world where the minorities still have the right 
constitutional rights by which we guarantee that there is no uh, injustice or prejudice to them. There are so many solutions in the world by which guarantee that. The problem is, and this comes from me talking to a lot of Jews and Zionists, they do have this belief that if we don't rule ourselves, there will be a Holocaust. And that mindset should change. Maybe if we go by the, by the solution I'm suggesting, that let's go first, have 15, 20 years of peace, and then, but the right of return is sacred, it's holy. As Matas said, how on earth someone, Jew now, who has no resemblance to the region whatsoever, has a right to go and live, while me, 70 years back, my parents left Jaffa, they died outside of Jaffa, and I have no right to, to live in Jaffa. Mark is the back. You. you. Two questions. One is if, uh, if there was equality uh, in Palestine slash uh, Israel, what would, um, officially Israel class itself as a Jewish state of Israel, what happens to the Jews in terms of um, their right to say it's a Jewish state as opposed to just a state of Israel or a state of Palestine? And secondly, in terms of the people that are uh, like, like the people are talking about references to the past. Uh, one of the interesting things that I found out was people were asked the question, if the Romans asked the Jews today to have access to um, the lands of Israel today, um, a lot of people are, um, were, were perplexed and asked, trying to ask that question in terms of we have the right to refer to the past in terms of um, God gave us this land, but if someone else has conquered your land, do they have the right to ask the same thing and actually move in? Um, and if that happens, um, where is the argument in terms of I have exclusive rights to this land as opposed to sharing the land or cohabitating with the, uh, the locals, recognising that there was a past of, it, of uh, Jews, but also there's a past of the Pal Palestinians. So could you sort of give us some suggestions in terms of how you view that sort of approach? so many civilizations that came and went and uh, was there in, in, in the land, the historical land of Palestine. So that's, that's not new. Um, the point that if Rome today comes to Israel is like, oh, we have a right of going back to the land, I think that would be out. Uh, and uh, like, we, we don't buy this argument. Uh, again, when we talk about right of return, we're talking about people who actually own houses and lands. Right? They've got documents to show that this is my land, this is my house. I'm not talking about some mythology uh, of, of uh, being promised the land uh, by Almighty uh, real estate agent. That's not the case. Um, so that's the bit that I got from uh, from your uh, <laughs> uh, from your question. Uh, what was the first part? Uh, but what about the Jewish state or just the state of Israel? The Jewish state of Israel or the state of Israel? I, I don't know what's, what's, what's wrong with that. Right? Uh, um, I, I guess the fact calling it Jewish state is by itself is some form of uh, apartheid and, and discrimination. discrimination. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And then, then they call it a democracy. So, yeah. I'll just finish. Shemek. Just I want to confirm about an important point. The problem about settlers who came from Europe to invade Palestine, they didn't come to integrate with indigenous people. They came to replace them. And in 1914, there was negotiation before the First World War between Palestinians and settlers who came from Russia and Europe. And Palestinians accepted the Jewish people to come to live with Palestinians, to integrate with Palestinians. But the problem, the Zionists refused to integrate with Palestinians. They came to replace them. This settler colonialism, this is a theory of colonialism, not to integrate, just to replace 
This is happening in Australia, in New Zealand, in America, and they want to eliminate from indigenous people by genocide or ethnic cleansing. What happened, it was ethnic cleansing, expelled Palestinians, even if Jewish people have the right to live in Palestine, they should not or they must not to eliminate by this way Palestinians. And there is no connection between Jewish people in Europe and the indigenous Jewish who were living in Middle East. If you are talking about Jewish, uh, Jewish state or this is, was a part of the history of the indigenous people. So if they came from Europe as the first immigration, by the way, Palestinians didn't fight against them. They were in London, but later, after the Zionist movement in, 19, in 1897, they realized the colonial project in Palestine about ethnic cleansing and establish a state on the ruins of Palestinians. So it is important all the time to think, to integrate, to live together, to establish democratic state, and in this case, Jewish and Christians and Muslims can live together in peace and uh, we, we, in equal rights, and uh, we can achieve like a secular society. This is the idea. Thanks. Thanks, Amit. Australian Fair Trade Investment Network, and I just wanted to raise an issue because in my work um, analysing trade agreements, I'm aware that the Australian government is currently doing a feasibility study for a free trade agreement with Israel. And um, I assisted some um, of the local Palestinian solidarity groups to do submissions against this idea. Um, but I just wanted to let people know that um, it, uh, the government will look at the feasibility study and make a decision whether to proceed with negotiations or not, probably in the second half of this year. So um, I just wanted to ask if you're aware of that and whether, whether that will become part of your campaign. Not to have a free trade agreement with this yeah. <laughs> Helmi, do you want to make a comment on this? Helmi is our convener for Australia, so I think it's appropriate to uh, direct this question to you. Thank you. We did, we did promote anti uh, free trade with Israel very strongly. It's not one of our campaigns, because campaigns, as Martel said, they have to have very thorough research. This came up all of a sudden, and we did, re, uh, we did uh, promote it very strongly. And we have a, if you go to our website, you will see you could sign a petition against it. It's terrible. And there are so many organizations. In fact, let me admit that APAM, in Australia, there are two umbrella organizations. APAM, Australia Palestine Advocacy Network, as Mark has explained, they do the lobbying. BDS Australia, which is also an umbrella organization. Each, each umbrella has like so many organizations under it, which is pro-Palestine. They are specialized in lobbying and talking to governments, we are specializing in BDS only. So they led that and we also pushed it, of course, and we asked oh, so many organizations. And there was a quite good number of uh, cases and even individuals. One in the Northern Beaches the Committee of Palestine, Dr. Caroline uh, Graham wrote it. Excellent. There are so many great uh, the problem, as someone said, we have a terrible government. Yes. We have incredibly terrible government. A government that votes in the United Nations against a resolution in the United States, the state, uh, sorry, United Nations, that says the Palestinians should have the right for self-determination. It doesn't even mention Israel, and Australia votes against it. How on earth do you vote against anyone to have this right? Answering your question again very quickly, I think what I said, in, 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 democrat, in, in modern democracy, religions there is no place for religion. If you say Jewish religion, uh, state, Muslim state, Christian state, who in, does Australia say where you are Christian state? Does USA say you are what? We shouldn't. I mean, there are backwards countries like Saudi Arabia or Pakistan or whatever, maybe. But in, the, in modern democracy, that's not acceptable. We live together, equal rights. If you are, if you, look, I understand that the Jews, 
because of historical reasons, they have this fear from persecution. And that's understandable. And we should really give them the assurance that this should not happen again. Any anti-Semitism, we are more against it than what the Jews, than the Zionists. But that should not be used to be, or not to be against us. Please stop manufacturing anti-Semitism against our rights. Yeah, bravo. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Uh, thank you for the speaking. So I'm in a bit of an unusual position because I actually help on a, on a BDS stool nearly every weekend uh, with a friend also, Laurie does too. Now, I, I, it's my opinion that there are, there's a massive uh, potential for getting um, young Palestinian and Arab people involved on stalls and, and this sort of thing, and also young Jewish people like uh, Kia Kranko, who you've already mentioned, who made the film. Borderlands, and um, I just wondered if there are any, any plans to really, uh, I know it's not easy um, to, to get an activist organization really running up and running in Sydney, but if there, if there are plans to increase the number of stalls and these sort of outreach in places like the Kemba, Punchbowl, but also like, you know, Bondi or Glebe or, or anywhere else, just to really get these up and running, to, to give it some oomph, you know, some real, real uh, clout among the population. Thank you. I think, I think to answer, answer this, like obviously we're always um, uh, highly recruiting, right? In terms of trying to uh, attract uh, members and try to attract also young organizations, be it student organizations or, or others. Uh, uh, we've got talks with, with a number of organizations uh, right now as we speak to uh, get the support and help them kind of start up and start uh, kind of doing their action and also start supporting BDS. So that definitely, I guess, it's good to get the younger generations involved. Uh, uh, and that's something we, we always try to, to do as part of uh, kind of the strategies that we have in terms of spreading uh, the BDS. Hopefully that answers the Thank you very much for the test. Uh, look, I'm, I'm warning you. Oh, we got five minutes to go. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much to the speakers. Um, I just wanted to raise the question of the bizarre situation we have inside Israel at the moment, where we have this hydra-headed government with a one-point program is no to Netanyahu. I don't know what their other policies are. Um, I'm just wondering if that, in a sense, it's a weakness in the Israeli political situation at the moment. Is it possible that this can be exploited um, by the Palestinians too to get some kind of advantage? Because this government fall apart at the slightest um, you know, problem. Uh, particularly, and I just, and the second point is that Sheikh Jarrah, to me, is the, is the critical issue. If it, Sheikh Jarrah is, is sitting there waiting to explode again, if the court decides to uh, expel the Palestinians from Sheikh Jarrah, we have another war. Absolutely no question about it, we have another war. Now, <laughs> I just wonder, is, is there a real politic here that this Israeli government, do they want that? If they do that, they fall apart. So, I don't know, I just, it's, it's all speculation, but it looks to me like, in a strange way, a strange, strange way, the Israeli government is in a, in a weak position at the moment, rather than a strong one. Speculation, if any of the speakers would like to talk about that. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for your question, comrade. Just I, I'd like to start with uh, Sheikh Jarrah. This is important issue and so dangerous, especially it, uh, what happened in uh, Jerusalem is ethnic cleansing. It is the ethnic cleansing started in 1948, and the Zionist uh, government wanted to continue the ethnic cleansing because they have a plan. They have a plan. It's named Great Jerusalem. This uh, plan is about the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in order to declare 
the Jerusalem is the capital of Jewish people, just for Jewish people. And now there is systematic plan in order to expel Palestinians from Jerusalem. And, um, and for that, I don't think the situation will be like uh, stable and will be violence because they want people to leave to replace them. And no one can accept in the war that it's, it's new settlers came and to replace and take my house. I will steal my house or my home. So I think today will be a big problem because there is a march in order to pressure Palestinians and uh, to leave their homes. And regarding about uh, Israeli courts, we do recognize of the occupation. We don't recognize of these courts. So what do we think about these courts will decide? No way to decide something like uh, uh, for anything for Palestinians. The court just to, to say that uh, there is a decision by court in order to expel Palestinians. What is a court? And about government in uh, Israel, all of them, settlers, all of them killed Palestinians, all the staff, and all of them were leaders, gave orders to kill civilians, they are criminals, kill civilians, children. So we don't believe about any of the colonial uh, parties and uh, settlers like this government. So, it's, yes, it is in weak situation because of resistance. So the only solution for Palestinian resistance, and we are proud about the resistance of Palestinians, and we are proud of supporters around the world who support legal resistance in Palestine. Thank you.